Many local restaurants installed elaborate outdoor dining setups during the pandemic, but that could cost them the deadline for bringing those setups within city code and the consequences for missing it. A North County Botanical Nursery's Instagram is hacked and held for ransom. The surprising response when the owner told the hackers no. And while the pandemic upended our very way of life, the San Diego Humane Society says some things stayed the same. The thousands of calls they responded to last year as ABC 10 News goes for a positively San Diego ride along. ABC 10 News at 6 starts now. Restaurant owners across San Diego are now learning the elaborate and expensive parklets that got them through the pandemic may require changes. Their regulations, some say, are another punch in the gut after an unimaginable year. Good evening. I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. The catch comes as the city extends outdoor dining through July of 2022. Our ABC 10 News reporter John Horn shows us the new deadline to make some key changes. Restaurants invested thousands into these parklets, which helped keep them alive when indoor dining was either illegal or severely limited. This one here at Cloak and Petal in Little Italy cost about $15,000. You can see it has art, garden lights, even a fire pit. They basically went all out to try to get people to feel comfortable at this restaurant. Now the city never expected parklets to be this elaborate, and that's why it's about to do something. We added a nice high top fire pit just to make it lively. Caesar Vallon and his partners at Little Italy's Cloak and Petal invested upwards of $15,000 into the parklet that stands outside their front door. We knew that if we were going to continue with outdoor dining, letting people sit in the cold without heat lamps, it, was, it, was, it wasn't going to be a very sustainable option. So we didn't have much of a choice and we had to start thinking ahead. Their prediction came true with coronavirus restrictions lasting through the winter, the rooftop shielding diners from the rain, the heaters keeping them warm. Restaurants in places like Little Italy, downtown and La Jolla built parklets with similar creature comforts, taking advantage of temporary city permits that allowed businesses to expand into sidewalks and streets. But the city never intended for them to be so elaborate, posting this sample drawing of a parklet that was authorized. There's quite a few restaurants that's spent, you know, 50 to, you know, $80,000 on their parklets. And it would be sad to see them go. The city council voted Tuesday to extend temporary outdoor dining through June 13th, 2022. But its planning department director is giving restaurants a deadline of July 13th this year to bring their parklets into compliance or have their permits revoked. That means no rooftops and correcting issues of extending too far out into the street and blocking red curbs, to name a few. If we can't have uh, some type of roofing, then we might as well just take them down because nobody wants to sit in the sun. I mean, I've been out here for 30 seconds and I want to get under a shade. Valen estimates it would cost a few thousand dollars to get the necessary umbrellas should the rooftop go. In Little Italy, John Horn, ABC 10 News. And coming up tonight at 7, we're going to speak with another restaurant owner who spent $50,000 on his parklet and his plans now for moving forward. For the second time in three days, there were fewer than 100 new local COVID cases reported today. The county also says four more people died from the virus. Hundreds of cruise ship employees are getting their vaccines at the waterfront. Sharp Health is administering first doses of the Pfizer vaccine to 450 staff members from Holland America cruise ships through tomorrow. The CDC says cruises can resume sailing as early as mid-July if 98% of the crew members and 95% of the passengers are vaccinated. And port officials say cruise ships could begin sailing out of San Diego by the fall. Community colleges faced a grim year as enrollment plummeted across the state during the pandemic. But as our partners at KPBS report, local college leaders are now optimistic about post pandemic recovery. The San Diego City College enrollment dropped nearly 15% between the fall of 19 and 2020. Despite that enrollment for vocational training programs at San Diego Community Colleges, it actually increased. We have over 75 free job training certificate programs. Um, yesterday we ran our enrollment and we are 17% over our target. So we are popping at the, at the seams in terms of enrollment. Southwestern College in Chula Vista also saw an enrollment drop attributed to economic factors. Both community colleges added that the, the drops, they were disproportionate to students of color. And you can stay on top of the latest coronavirus and vaccine developments with the ABC 10 News app. Find it for free in the App Store. 
Several public officials are pledging their support for a proposed bridge at Mission Trails in honor of a young man who died there. Our ABC 10 News reporter Melissa Masiha spoke to the young man's father about the action being taken. It's been nearly four months since Max and I passed away here at Mission Trails. Every day since then, his parents have been working hard for a bridge in his name. Today, some progress. With tears in his eyes, Ben Lanai told me he visited the site where he lost his son. His family lives in the Bay Area. It was his first time here since the accident. It looked so peaceful, uh, so tranquil and, uh, and beautiful. And yet it is where my son died. I was really uh, shaken and, uh, and deeply moved. Uh, it was sort of a pilgrimage to where he looked at the sky for the last time. Max Lanai died while trying to cross the San Diego River during a run January 29th. His parents said he slipped and drowned. But now they have hope their son's life won't be in vain. I believe that the bridge for Max is not just a step in the right direction, but a necessity. Councilmember Raul Campillo is the Mission Trails Regional Park Task Force Chair. He was joined by Councilmember Joe LaCava and former Mayor Dick Murphy, who's on the Citizens Advisory Committee. They, along with bike advocates, publicly supported a bridge. In times when things are dark, that's an opportunity for us to shine a light on something. And that's what we're here for today, is to shine a light on something that needed to get fixed for a long time. Team 10 learned a bridge had been talked about for a decade, but nothing ever happened. Do you know why it wasn't given a higher priority back then? Well, I think as, as former Mayor Dick Murphy said, uh, the, the San Diego for years has had a, a structural budget deficit and infrastructure plans are, are difficult to get funded. There's many, many priorities across the city, and so it's really a matter of the resources that we've had. There are resources now, thanks to Max's family, helping to raise already $700,000 through the San Diego Foundation, a project of love to remember a son gone too soon. Melissa Masiha, ABC 10 News. Campillo, La Cava, and the rest of the task force will vote on the project tomorrow. Funding is through a public-private partnership, and it could take several years for the bridge to be ready. 8th Street in National City is still closed tonight after a gas leak there yesterday. That gas leak has since been capped. A construction crew accidentally cut through an underground utility line yesterday morning, and that leak lasted all day, forcing dozens of homes and a school to evacuate. An elementary school was back to virtual learning today while crews work through. It will reopen tomorrow. sdg &E says that some people may still have their gas shut off while crews work to restore service. Years of hard work just to be taken out from underneath you overnight is just torture. A North County nursery says hackers took over their Instagram account and then demanded a ransom. New at 6 o'clock ABC, 10 News reporter Michael Chen shows us what happened when they refused to pay up. Over the last five years, Waterwise Botanicals, a specialty nursery in Bonzel, thrived as its Instagram following it drives traffic to our business continued to grow. Social media manager Julie McNulty says on Mother's Day, she got a message from an account named Help Service that appeared to be representing Instagram. Basically told me that I was infringing on copyright laws and that our account would be terminated. Because the account had more than 15,000 followers, she thought it legitimate and clicked on a link to appeal her case, which took her to a screen that looked like the Instagram login page. After I submitted our credentials, it took me nowhere and I immediately knew that something wasn't right. She changed her password three times, but by the next day, someone had hacked and gained control of the account, changing the nursery's contact number. When McNulty texted that number, she was told she could have the account back for $600 to be delivered in Bitcoin. I felt completely heartbroken. McNulty says the owner decided not to pay the ransom. Who's to say that they're not going to ask for more money after you pay them? Days later, after the nursery ignored the hacker's offer to cut the ransom in half, the hacker deleted all of the content from the account. I was in tears all day, just seeing all of my hard work just getting deleted. McNulty isn't alone. In 2019, we told you about a local travel blogger with a similar hacking story. Experts say the best way to prevent the hacking is to enable the two-factor authentication feature McNulty has for the nursery's new Instagram account, which she had to start from scratch. We've had an incredible response of people. We will build our Instagram back. Michael Chen, ABC 10 News. 
Another measure McNulty wished that she had taken is backing up the Instagram account. She sent several emails to Instagram. She says she did not get a response. We also reached out to Instagram and we are waiting to hear back. A huge tree came crashing down on a Lemon Grove man's home overnight. David Gallagher says that he was just watching TV in his living room just before 1130 when this happened. He said at first he had no idea what was going on. It was like an explosion, you know, uh, suddenly you're sitting there relaxed watching whatever I was watching. I have no idea now. The news, I guess. And suddenly, kaboom, it was like a bomb dropped. And you don't know whether it's just your house, the neighborhood has been hit. You don't know. Gallagher said he tried to go outside to see what happened, but heard his neighbors telling him to stay back inside. That's when he says he discovered the tree, crushed his bedroom and bathroom. It also flattened his car. Gallagher, though, was not hurt.